process is power, using power to get what you want. The marketplace is the one where libertarians live. So we can argue until the cows come home about whether you should vote or not. I don't care what you do. That's OK. That's fine with me. I'm just telling you what a gore is and how it came about or whatever. So the philosophy uh, as written was that um, to be consistent, uh, libertarians would only work in a marketplace kind of way, in a voluntary way, and that um, doing the, the voting uh, process and uh, promoting candidates would actually, in the end, increase the power of the state, even though you're doing it for the reasons of decreasing the power of the state, he basically said that would work. So just, just uh, read this. This is a place uh, where you can find a link to it and read it online. There's also an audio book so you can listen to it all. Then agorism then advocates the means is counter-economics. And what he said was, the establishment of economics uh, teaching, the purpose of it is to mystify people. Uh, you know, everybody says, God, economics, I don't understand it. This is so dry and boring and all that. And, but he said the purpose of it is to mystify it so people don't know how their money is being stolen from them. If you've got more clarity, you'd understand, well, there's this central banking system that's owned by this wealthy elite who have this plan to rob everybody's pockets all at once. That's counter-economics, is fully, clearly understanding how we're being robbed. So counter-establishment counter economics got distilled down to counter-economics. And then counter-economics practice, rather than theory, is actually being involved in the economy and being free in what you actually do in all your enterprises. And then if we um, traded with each other, traded with the outside world in the counter economy, we increased our own freedom, we increased our own prior prosperity, and we create a whole community where we can have a marketplace. And essentially, from time to time, we are going to get attacked. Uh, the state doesn't have all power. You know, um, There are people that burglarize homes, and well, it's against the law, but they don't catch them because the police aren't standing at every door, every house, trying to prevent them from being burglarized. Same thing with the marketplace. People say, well, you can't be in the counter economy. You know, they have laws against that. Well, they can't enforce all the laws. Uh, you know, the, the best example of all is the USSR. They had the most pervasive police state and control of, you know, all times. And yet, there was this thriving underground economy called the Malevo economy, which is the left-hand economy. And what happened there was, and I'll turn it over to the rest of the panel. I'm Jack Schmidt, by the way. Soviet Union, since everybody worked for the state, but everybody was also a consumer, one of the currencies that they had was everybody had to get forms signed and permissions and all that. Well, the people that they were getting their permissions from were actually their neighbors and friends and whatever. So there, there became a trade where um, uh, approvals and whatever became another form of currency. And if you wanted to get your pipes fixed or something like that, and a plumber came to you for 